Welcome to the JDSU HST 3000 product learning series. In this session we're going to touch on the outside of the HST 3000. I'll go over all the connectors and buttons, a little bit of what you can expect to see when you turn your unit on. We won't turn it on just yet. We'll save that for a little later. Let's start with the back of the HST. If you turn your unit around and look at the back, you'll see two halves. The SIM is on the top and the battery is on the bottom. Use the quarter turn screw if you need to change SIMs and the battery latch to remove the battery. Look at the back of the battery near the bottom to see the battery status panel. This describes you, to you what the LEDs on the bottom of the battery mean. I'll show you that in just a minute. If you have your charger plugged in, the battery light on the bottom will be a steady red. If it's green, the battery is charged up and ready to go. If it's flashing red, it means there's some kind of problem, like you may be using the wrong power supply or there's some other kind of problem. If you have any problems, any kind at all, call JDSU's Technical Assistance Center or TAC at 866-228-3762, extension 2300. Now let's look at the bottom and side panels. If you look at the bottom panel with the screen facing upward, you'll see the speaker on the top, which you can use to listen to tones or make or listen to voice over IP or POTS calls. If you need to listen to calls, though, it may be a little easier to hear if you attach a headset to the headset jack on the top of the unit, especially if you're out testing and there's lots of roadway noise, or if you're in someone's house or office and using the HST to place or receive calls. On the bottom left is a charger connector, which you'll use to charge up the unit, either with an AC or main supply that came with your unit, or you can use the optional cigarette lighter if one came with your HST to charge up the battery from your vehicle. A complete charge takes about four hours, so I would say it's best to leave it powered on overnight, and it'll be ready for you to use when you come in in the morning. To the right of the charger connector is the serial connector, which you can use to connect a printer or a terminal if you want to print your saved files. To the right of that is the battery status LED. Remember, green means it's charged up and ready to go, and red means it's charging when the charger is connected. Also remember that neither light will be on, neither red or green, if you don't have your charger connected. On the side panel, you'll see, you'll see a RJ jack that you'll use for your DSL connection. Or if you're using a SIM that's different than DSL, like the Combo T1 or, or Copper testing SIM, the connectors will be different. Looking at the top, with the screen pointing upward, you'll see the Ethernet connector on the left. The Ethernet connector can be used to make firmware upgrades, either from JDSU.com or an FTP site over the internet, or your company's intranet if you have the firmware available on your internet. Or you can set the HST to work like a voice over IP phone or a web browser. You can even do FTP speed tests, or do ping or traceroute, or even monitor multiple video streams. Next is the USB connector. If you want, you can plug in a USB keyboard or a mouse to control the unit instead of using the buttons on the front. That's really useful if you're using the HST's internal VT100 terminal to read HDSL statistics if you're doing an HDSL test. You can also plug in a memory stick and save results right to it after you've run a test. There's no need to set it up. When you hit save, the result file will automatically be saved to the USB stick. You can also use the USB stick to upgrade the firmware on the unit. JDSU provides firmware releases several times a year with new features that will make your job easier. You can find new firmware and upgrade instructions on JDSU.com on the HST3000 webpage. Call TAC if you have any questions. Next is the headset connector. You can use it to plug in a headset which you really want to do if you want to make or listen to calls on the unit. Finally, the SIM is attached to the bottom. The one shown here has primary and secondary tip ring and ground connectors, or A, B, and E connectors, depending upon where you're located, for copper testing. The SIM attached to your unit may be different, depending upon your job requirements. Finally, we'll finish up this section with a look at the front panel. First is the user interface screen. That's where you'll see the test running and make any setup changes. If you push the green power on button on the bottom left, you can turn the unit on or off. You can also set it to auto power off once you turn it on. I'll go over that in a later section. The basic navigation keys are in the middle, starting with the cancel or the X button. Just remember, exit to either get out of a test or go back a screen. 
whichever you're, you're doing. The white keys in the middle with the arrows are the navigation keys. You can scroll up or down, you can go left or right. Next is the OK button. You can see it also has a little check mark on it. That's really like an enter button on a computer. You can use that to either enter a test or a setup. Next is the alphanumeric keypad, which is kind of like a number pad on a cell phone. Use that to enter a number to select a test you want to run or a setup. You can even enter uppercase or lowercase numbers or even symbols like a period or a dash or a pound sign. On the bottom left is a little blue key. That's the shift key. Use that to adjust items in blue that are next to each of the number keys. You can do things like turn on, turn up or down the sound, or adjust the screen brightness. Watch. If I hold down the blue key and press on the number 6, the screen gets darker. If I hold down the blue key and press on the number 3, the screen gets lighter. Above the number keys, you'll see some round buttons. Those are the application buttons. The configure key on the far left lets you change how your set test is set up. Home is where you see all your manual tests running, like your resistance or your DVOM or your uh, TDR or DSL sync test, or if you have a T1 module attached and you want to run a bit error rate test. Remember, go home if you want to see your manual tests running. If you press the Auto Test button, you can run scripted one-button tests where several tests can be run at the same time, like the Copper Good Pair Check or the Wideband Auto Test with a Far End Device or a Fed. Finally, if you press the System button, you can look at your save results, or check which firmware and options on your unit, or a number of other things. The function of the main application keys stays pretty much the same, unless you were to change the SIM. If you do that, you'll see the under the configuration buttons, it may change just a little bit. Right under the screen are the soft keys. They're called soft because they change depending upon what you're doing. Don't worry, you'll, you can see what they mean on the user interface so you don't have to remember. Well, that's about all for this session. We went over the outside connectors and a little bit of what you can expect to see when you turn on your unit. Next, we'll turn the unit on and we'll go over some of the software menus and setups on the HST. We'll turn it on and show you how to check your firmware version. That's real important. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.